Hello and welcome back to Planet 40k. Today's topic is reviewing the Blood Angels Death Company Intercessors and how they stack up against the regular Space Marine Intercessors. So if you stumbled across the channel today, we do have a Blood Angels playlist where we've already done a number of in-depth reviews, so have a look at those if you haven't already, and subscribe to not miss out on any future Blood Angels content. So the Death Company Intercessors come in at 6 power for a 5 man unit, which is a minimum squad, 12 power if you go beyond 5 models. All the 24 points per man before any upgrades. They can be taken in squads up to 10, so a max unit at base cost is setting you back 240 points. So let's begin with the keywords of note. Of course they have the Blood Angels Perfection keyword, as these are specifically Blood Angels models. They are Core, they're Primaris and an Infantry. They carry both the Intercessor keyword as well as the Death Company keyword, so lots of doors to stratagems and buffs can be unlocked with those keywords. So one of the key differences between the regular Intercessors is the fact that they come in the Elite slots. So they lose the Objective Secured ability, and we'll find out later in the video what they gain to compensate for it. So let's get into their stat line next, which is kind of bog standard for marine stats here. It's movement 6 inch, weapon skill 3 plus, ballistic skill 3 plus, strength 4, toughness 4, wounds 2, attacks 3, leadership 7 and a 3 plus save. So really they're gaining an extra attack within their stats over a standard intercessor. Note that there's no sergeant in the unit, so the leadership will slightly be lower for the unit which is leadership 7, not leadership 8. So those max units in particular need to look out for that. Ability wise there's only two here, Angels of Death which does slightly assist in that morale phase with no combat attrition modifiers. You of course get all the basic stuff, Bolter, Discipline, Shock Assault and Combat Doctrines, all very helpful, Shock Assault in particular. Then they have Black Rage which is due to them being in the Death Company, so there's a few pros and cons to being in the Death Company so they can't fall back out of combat so they will need to eliminate all the models in melee to get out of that combat unless the target falls back. Now you can play a bit tricky here by not piling in as much as you need to and if you're really wanting out of a certain combat you do have the chance of simply getting out of engagement range due to models that your opponent removes from play. Although this opens a door for your unit to now be shot at so it swings and roundabouts with that. The nice thing about Black Rage is if you charge or make a heroic intervention then you gain an attack. So with three attacks base, one for Shock Assault and one for Black Rage you're looking at five per man, six if it's the Assault Doctrine with Savage Echoes. The third part to having Black Rage is a six plus feel no pain save not as good as an in-run save, but it's for each lost wound, so it is something. Then the final bullet point is the unit cannot perform actions. This one can be annoying as you may want these guys as your countercharge backline point scoring unit. And sometimes when they're not near a fight, it could be nice to get secondary actions going. But hey, you have other units in the list to do those kind of things. Worth also mentioning, with these guys, they have Red Thirst. So it's a plus one to their advance roll, plus one to their charge roll, and plus one to their wound rolls which is a Blood Angels chapter tactic from the Space Marine Codex. Okay, let's move into the war gear. There's quite a lot here. Let's begin with the actual stock loadout first of all. So these guys carry a bolt pistol, a bolt rifle, and a frag crack grenade. So they don't start with the melee weapon. So skipping over the bolt pistol and the grenade, as always, as they're extremely common in Space Marine factions and you barely use them anyway. The bolt rifle is basically an upgraded bolt gun, 30 inch range, rapid fire 1, strength 4, minus 1 AP and 1 damage. So it has a decent range, especially for a unit that may be sitting in deployment zone, scoring points and waiting to pounce on anything that enters your side of the table. If they don't move, they're going to get double shots with bolter discipline within the Angels of Death ability. And with Combat Doctrines, turn 2 will make these weapons a minus 2 AP weapon, and you can have it for turn 3, but you're playing Blood Angels, so you're likely going to be changing it to the Assault Doctrine at that point. So for some quick maths, a max unit of 10 will have 10 shots each, hitting on 3s, net 6.7 hits on average. Double all these figures, if you do remain stationary, and you're going to have 2 shots per model. So against Toughness 3, you're going to do about 4.4 wounds, killing about 3.7 Guardians if you're going against Guardians. Against Toughness 4, you're going to get about 3.3 .3 wounds on average, 0.8 dead intercessors. First toughness 5 up to toughness 7 is 2.2 wounds so about 0.6 dead plague marines and then versus toughness 8 you're only going to get 1.1 wounds off which is about 0.6 damage on that vehicle or monster. Then all those said units can make their saves at a minus 1 AP so really these things aren't really doing a great deal. I wouldn't be firing them at toughness 5 or more. Toughness 4 or less is at least removing models even if it is in drips and drabs. So let's see how we can make these guys a bit more efficient by giving them a better loadout. So the first option is to replace the bolt rifles for all models with an auto bolt rifle. So this lowers the range to a 24 inch range but it now has 3 shots per man. So it is strength 4 but there's no minus 1 AP and it's just 1 damage. So you sacrifice range and AP but 3 times as many shots. It also becomes an assault weapon now so you can't get double shots from the bolter discipline anymore. But you could now advance and fire it with the minus 1 to hit penalty. So a 10 man unit now has 30 shots. Using those same examples against Toughness 3, it's 13.3 wounds, killing 8.9 Guardians. 
against Toughness 4. You're going to do about 10 wounds, killing 1.7 intercessors versus Toughness 5 to Toughness 7. You're getting about 6.7 wounds, so you should be killing around 1.1 Plague Marines on average. Then Toughness 8, 3.3 wounds, 1.1 damage. So much better figures with the wounding dice, but there's now no minus 1 AP, so saves will be easier to make. It's still a slightly better weapon in my opinion, but you might not always get to fire it due to it only being 24 inch range. Next on the list is to replace the bolt rifles for all models with the stalker bolt rifles, pretty much matching up with the standard intercessors options at the moment. So stalker bolt rifles are a longer range rifle, which is a 36 inch range. They're now heavy 1 weapons, strength 4, minus 2 AP and 2 damage. So you don't want to be moving with these things, otherwise you're going to get a minus 1 to hit penalty. They're hurting more elite infantry now due to the damage being 2, so with 10 shots you're again averaging 6.7 hits. Against Toughness 3 it's 4.4 wounds, killing 4.4 dead guardians. Toughness 4 is 3.3 wounds, getting about 2 dead intercessors there. Toughness 5 to Toughness 7 is 2.2 wounds, getting about 1.5 plague marines. And then Toughness 8, 1.1 wounds, doing about 1.5 damage. So a slight bump up as you can see for the more elite models but it would be quite wasteful on the weaker Toughness 3 units. Next we have the option to swap out both the Bolt Pistol and the Bolt Rifle for a Heavy Bolt Pistol and an Astardis Chainsword, so now we're getting into the melee stuff. Okay, so the Heavy Bolt Pistol is a pimped out Bolt Pistol, it's 18 inch range, Pistol 1, Strength 4, minus 1 AP and 1 damage. As far as pistols go, it's not actually that bad. You do give up your range by taking this, but the damage outcome is pretty much identical to a bolt rifle firing one shot per model, as it's got the same stats, except it's not 30 inch range, it's just 18. But then you're getting an Astardis Chainsword, which has a few interesting interactions with Blood Angels units in particular. So the strength user making them strength 4 in this case, minus 1 AP and 1 damage, and you're gaining an additional attack per model with the weapon. So you start with three attacks, one for Death Company, one for Shock Assault, one more for the Chainsword, then potentially one more for Savage Echoes in the Assault Doctrine. So these guys can potentially be getting seven attacks per model, take 10 of these and you're talking 70 attacks, and there's also a plus one to wound with Red Thirst. So let's get a breakdown for these. Presuming you're in the Assault Doctrine, turn three and onwards, and you've charged your opponent. That may not always be the case, but for this example, we're gonna consider each model to have seven attacks. So a 10 man unit, 70 attacks, will hit 46.7 times on average. That's without any buffs to the hit rolls, which is quite easy because they're core. From 46.7 hits, this is what they're gonna do. And also bear in mind combat doctrines, so the weapon is actually now a minus two AP because you're in the assault doctrine. First those guardians, you're gonna get 38.9 wounds, meaning 38.9 dead guardians. Against the intercessors, it's 31.1 wounds, killing around 10 and a half of them. Against those plague marines, you're getting around 23.3 wounds, killing around 7.8 of them. And then toughness eight models, 15.6 wounds, doing about 10.4 damage. So they're absolutely murdering infantry, even toughness 7 vehicles, which I haven't actually shown on the table, but they're taking around 16 wounds on average. So that plus one to wound ability massively helps against toughness 7 in particular, because you would normally wound on 5s, but it's now 4s. Usually when you're wounding on 4s, it means your strength has matched their toughness, so it's an underrated ability really, because it's almost like you've got a strength 7 weapon there. Okay, let's move further into the monster list of options that this unit has. So if you take a heavy bolt pistol from the previous upgrade, one model can switch it out for a hand flamer or a plasma pistol. I'll display both on the screen now, I don't think it's worth putting it on a single model, plus you've got to pay additional points for these weapons, both are 5 points. And as we've already seen with the melee breakdown, you should be cleaning up your target, and even if they did survive your attack, you're likely going to be fighting first in your opponent's turn. So you'll mop them up and then you'll be free to move around in your own turn. So yeah, adding a few extra wounds with these pistol upgrades, I just don't see the need to do it. So the next three bullet points in the upgrades are all for only one model, and it's an optional thing. So you can, one model can choose one of these three. So the first bullet point is again the hand flame or plasma pistol option, one more model can do that. If they don't want to do that, they can take a power sword for 5 points, which you probably won't need, as it's really only an anti-infantry weapon, and you guys ain't going to really have any trouble with those anyway. You can take a power fist at 10 points, which is quite strong with strength 8 and plus 1 to wound with red thirst, so likely wounded on 2s, although it is a minus 1 to hit. As the damage is 2, again it's an infantry killer, more towards elite infantry than screens. So then this just leads to 20 point thunder hammer. This one could be worth it, it's also a minus 1 to hit weapon and it is strength 8 again, plus 1 to wound, so again you're wounded on 2s most likely. It's only minus 2 AP, but I find that is plenty, then the damage is 3, not 2, so now it's a real threat against vehicles and monsters. You can have 6 attacks if you're charging the Assault Doctrine at minus 3 AP as well. So from the 6 attacks you'll hit roughly 3 of them because it's forced to hit now, causing 2.5 wounds where approximately 2.1 of them are going to go through, meaning an average damage output of 6.3 from a single model on a vehicle. 
Add this to the 10 damage you did with the other models, then you're wrecking anything. Even land raiders are not lasting at toughness 8 with 16 wounds. So I would consider having a thunder hammer hidden within the 10 man unit. Not so much if I took a 5 man unit as it's getting quite pricey there. And the only reason you've gone with 5 is to save on points. Finally, for every 5 models in the unit, one can swap out the bolt rifle for an Astardi's grenade launcher. So it has the frag and crack option, both at 30 inch range. The frag is assault d6, only strength 3 and it has the blast ability. And the crack grenade option is assault 1, strength 6, minus 1 AP and d3 damage. So pretty much the same as the actual grenades, except it can be shot at 30 inch range. So the upgrade is 5 points, I'd probably not bother. I mean I rarely remember that I even have grenades anyway sometimes, so why would I pay more? Just to have a bit of a better range, I don't know. I'd rather just have the bolt rifle options. So that's all the options as far as war gear goes. As for a few stratagems that you can use with these guys, you've got refusal to die. Depending on your unit size, it's going to be either 1 CP or 2 CP. Use when a death company unit has been selected as a target for an attack. Until the end of the phase, they're going to get a 5 plus, feel no pain save. Obviously you've got transhuman physiology as the primaris, so you can only wound them on more than a 4 plus. Again, it's going to be either 1 CP or 2 CP, depending on unit size. You've got gene route might, using the fight phase when a primaris unit is selected to fight and until the end of the phase, any hit rolls of a 6 in melee automatically wound the target. So that's going to be quite a lot of wounds. Then finally you've got fall on fury, again depends on your unit size so it's 1 or 2 CP. Use this before the first battle round, before the first turn begins. You select one death company unit within your army and that unit can make a normal move up to 12 inches as if it was your movement phase, but they must not end up within 9 inches from enemy models. So you've got two instances of when you would use this, either you're going first, you want to get up the board, usually deployment zones are separated by 24 inches, sometimes more, sometimes less. So you can move 6 inches with the stratagem, then move another 6 inches with your actual movement in the movement phase, which will get you within 12 inches. If you're playing on a mission that has you a lot closer with your deployment zones, then the first turn charge is on the cards, especially if they've deployed near their front line. If you aren't going first, you still could use it. Maybe your deployment zone hasn't got much obscuring terrain. So moving six inches could maybe hide your guys or even get them into light cover or dense cover. So that's the stratagems that I'd use with these guys. So we've gone through the options and I'll discuss how they compare to regular intercessors from the Space Marine Codex. Now we know that they've got access to the regular intercessor weapons and they've also got access to the assault intercessor weapons. So they're sort of a bit of an in-between. Now the advantages of having a death company option is obviously the extra attack with a black rage and the 6 plus feel no pain save and of course the death company keyword. However there are a few cons to selecting these over the standard guys. Firstly the battlefield rolled is now elite not troops meaning you've lost the objective secured on the unit. In some games this could be crucial in others not so much. It's also going to affect your detachment list as you do need troops in the main three detachments. The second key negative is taking these against the normal guys is the points cost. A normal marine intercessor is 20 points and the assault intercessors are 19 points a man. Your death company variant are 24 points a man, so it's either 4 or 5 points a model or more, depending on which unit you're comparing it with. And you multiply it by a min unit of 5, so you spent around 25 points more than the standard guys. And of course a 10 man unit is going to be 50 points more. So even if you do get the extra attack and the 6 plus feel no pain save, I'm not sold on needing to spend 5 more points for them to then lose objective secured too. Furthermore, the elite area of the supplement already has pretty powerful melee units in place, like you've got Sanguinary Guard for example. Yes, they're expensive at 30 points a man, but they're twice as quick due to their wings, they've got deep strike, and a 2 plus save, which in a backward sense is like having an in one save because a minus 3 AP weapon still gives you a 5 plus armor save. They can all take power fists and inferno pistols too. You've got Death Company Marines which are cheaper and you can stick a jump pack on them for only 3 points each. Again giving them double speed and deep strike and all models can take a thunder hammer too, not just one. Then you've got Assault Terminators from the Marine Codex. 33 points but you've got a thunder hammer and storm shield for an additional 10 points. Whereas it's 20 points for just one thunder hammer within the Death Company. If it was a 20 point weapon it would make the terminator and shield alone cost just 23 points which is one point less than a death company intercessor and they get to deep strike they got a 2 plus armor save with a storm shield and an in one save with three wounds too each terminator also has the option of having double lightning claws which is an extra two attacks each and they can reroll wound rolls don't forget they still got the crux terminatus for the five plus terminator in one save then when you apply those claws to blood angels each man's got two attacks base one for shock assault one for Savage Echoes and then two more each for the Claws, meaning six attacks each and a Sergeant gets one more as well because there's a Sergeant in that unit and they still wound on a plus one to wound with Red First, so it's actually a very good option. 31 attacks from a five-man unit 
that skin and infantry alive. Getting back onto the Death Company intercessors, they do of course so synergize well with plenty. All the usuals here, captains, lieutenants, chaplains, apothecaries, librarians, even a judiciar for a bit of support to fight first in combat. Now as these guys are quite slow, they're likely going to need to be in reserves or need a transport option if they want to move about on the battlefield. So maybe an impulse attack which allows them to get out and shoot in the same turn. Now there's no deep strike and there's no jump pack so getting forward isn't as straightforward. So as for the good points about taking these guys, they're death company so they've got the black rage to get an extra attack and a 6 plus feel and a pain save. They've got a good selection of weaponry options to sit back and shoot or be an aggressive melee based unit. They've got all the good keywords here, core, infantry, primaris, death company, intercessors so they interact with quite a lot of stratagems in the codex and the supplement. As for the bad, Black Rage also doesn't permit you to fall back or do any actions. Their elites, which is a widely contested area of the codex, they've got no objective secured, no combat squad in is allowed with this unit, which is actually quite important not just for your list building, but on your deployment it gives you some flexibility. No option for jump packs like the regular death company. Then finally, even though the ranged weapons are versatile, the melee weapons are quite limited, especially the big ones, which means they simply aren't as good as the other units in the supplement. So on for the rating. I'm going to give this rating comparing it to other options at your disposal, so not against other factions, it's against the Space Marine Codex and the Blood Angel supplement. So I'm going to be giving these guys a 2.5 out of 5. Death Company Marines, Assault Terminators and Sanguinary Guard are easily better options, all being much quicker and 2 out of 3 of those are much more tankier too. So let me know in the comments if you agree with this rating. Guys that's today's review, drop a like on your exit, sub if you are new as always and I'll see you in the next one.